This is the Walmart FLW Tour. Four days of intense competition with professional anglers setting out at the first light of day in the fastest boats on the water. The competition waters are massive and the bass they seek are hard to find. Equipped with artificial lures, the most advanced electronics and their own knowledge of the bass that roam America's lakes and rivers, the objective is simple. Bring back the five biggest fish each day and score the highest overall cumulative weight. 42 pounds. $125,000 in cash is the top prize, and the winner moves one step closer to the ultimate dream, the World Championship of Bass yeah. Fishing, the Forest Wood Cup, which is being held this year in Shreveport, Louisiana. Who will survive all four days of grueling competition and hold the trophy high? Find out next. Unbelievable. Come on, baby. Stay on. Oh. Time to rock and roll, folks! Showtime! Here we go! Thank you! That's what you call going after one, boy. His eyes are bigger than mine. That's a game changer right here, buddy. Would you look at that? Wow! Never been done in FLW history. Five bass limits! You're the new leader! You're Forrest Wood Cup champion! The Walmart FLW Tour has come to Grove, Oklahoma, nestled right along a finger of Grand Lake of the Cherokees. With a charming downtown full of shops dedicated to finding a bargain or finding a lure to take to the lake with you, Grove is the perfect host for our fifth event this year. Oh, Grand Lake is phenomenal this week. It's dynamite fishing out there. First day of the tournament, I caught maybe 30. You know, I was flipping bushes, and you'd flip your jig in a bush, and the whole bush would shake. What's put the bass in the buck brush is high water. But after heavy rains flooded the banks over the last week, the water is now falling as much as two feet in a day. That has scattered the bass out on the main lake, making it tougher to pattern these bass and catch a stringer over 15 pounds. Over the first two days of competition, though, one angler has been able to average 20 pounds a day, and that's Oklahoma native Jason Christie. He's fishing in the Elk River and targeting the bass as they move back out into the deeper water. It has a big island in the middle of it, acres and acres. Well, when it floods like it is, all those fish go back in that island, and when they start drawing it out, they have to come to the edge, and, and I kind of have them surrounded on this island, so they have to come to me. The first cut has been made, and for each angler today, the choices that lay ahead of them are not easy. In a lake full of three-pound bass, where do you go to find a kicker and catch the rayovac attack? Day three action underway on Grand Lake in Grove, Oklahoma. The top 20 pros and co-anglers battling it out. The top 10 pros trying to survive one more day. And look who we're joined by. This is where he started his career from just down the road in Jay, Oklahoma. The one and only Forest Wood Cup champion, Daryl Robertson. Daryl, a pleasure to have you here. Man, this has been uh, quite an interesting couple of days on a beautiful lake here uh, at Grand Lake. Let's talk about uh, the, the importance of you have to land every single fish because these guys are catching them left and right but there have been some really big misses over the last couple days. You know, when you fish real thick brush, like, you know, this across the lake here in Wolf Creek, you're throwing over in that brush, and you know if a five-pounder bites you, you're probably might not going to catch him, you know. So you always want to get one, you know, out in the clear. You can't make mistakes. All these guys are too good. You know, we have a whole field of people that can catch fish. Any day, everybody in the field could catch 18 to 20 pounds. And I think to separate yourself, you've got to get in that 20 to 21 range. Man, he wasn't as big as he thought he was. I need to catch one big one. Let's take a look at the leaderboard here on day three. You got guys like Jason Christie, Andy Morgan, Barry Wilson, Ish Monroe. There has been a lot of success coming out of that area. What what is it? Is is what's going on under the water there that's obviously making this a productive area for some of the guys in the top 20? I think one thing that's helped is like we've had a lot of rain in this area, you know. But most of the rain's been up in Kansas, Spring River, and the Osho Rivers coming down. That's what really had the influence of muddy water on our lake. But Elk River never did really get muddy, so the water's clean up there, and I think that's probably one reason they're catching the fish yeah. here. 
it, it's not a place that I ever choose to fish because every time I ever chose to fish it, I got burnt on tournament day. So, <laughs> but these, more power to these guys, they're, they're catching them. I think I have the area that I want and just we're just going to see if it holds up for four days or not. Well, Jason Christie has led the last couple of days. Like you, this is his home lake as well. So he's got the, the pressure of, uh, you know, having this in his backyard and trying to represent all his friends and family here in Oklahoma. Can he make it one more day to the top 10? Maybe a shot at his second tournament title of 2013? Only time will tell. I hadn't been able to target the real big fish. And that's what I've been looking for every day while I'm fishing. And I caught a five pounder off a, a little bit deeper point the other day. They have drawn the lake down about eight more inches since the second day of the term. And uh, that's what's got it a little messed up. So it really doesn't make any difference right now how you want to fish if it's two foot deep or five foot deep you're gonna catch the same type of fish. The presentation is pretty simple when the, the water's up this high and I'm just going along and flipping the willows and the buck bushes. And the problem when the water's this high, you just don't know when you're gonna get a bite. You're just gonna, I mean, you make a thousand pitches in a day and hope you throw it in the right hole. <laughs> Told you we'd get a bite somewhere. He didn't like it. He's a little bitty. We'll have to get rid of him later. Frustrating part about this lake is the way it's looking, you need to be catching 20 pounds a day. And you know, that's just a given. There, there's no chance of someone struggling like Jason that that, you know, he might have 10 pounds because there's no way that's going to happen with him, you know. You, you, you're going to have to catch 20 pounds a day. And, and to me, that, that's bad. I'd rather be on a lake that's tough where, you know, if you do catch 16 pounds, if that guy's got a chance to catch 10 and you can move up. And you can't, you cannot do it here. He's got too many fish. I guess that's a good start. You know, they're, they're going to have to, I'm going to have to cull all them. You know, I'm going to have to have at least what I did yesterday, if not more. But yeah, anytime you catch them, that's a good start. I just wish they'd been about four pounds a piece bigger. You can see back in there, there's, you know, if it's 50 yards, matter of fact, this is an island, it's probably water all the way across to the other side, and there's no telling how many fish are back in there, and that's one of the reasons I'm fishing up here is because I know there's, there's as you can't catch them all. They gotta keep coming. Jason Christie has had the best season of his career in 2013, winning the tour event on Beaver Lake back in the spring. The Rayovac Pro, who loves flipping and power fishing, is sharing water up in Elk River, and he feels confident his experience here is giving him the edge. When that sun gets high, it takes away all this shade and puts it in there where you can, where you can fish. You know, anything we had before, 11, as far as quality fish is, is a bonus. Just gotta get lucky right now and put it in front of one. Keep flipping. And I'm not gonna do nothing different. I got a couple of cranking places that I may go hit. Uh, but, man, I've just, I'm a flipper and, and you got willows that look like that one. It's just hard to get out there and crank. Big him. Got him. I thought he was bigger than that, to be honest with you. Hey, don't be complaining. I'm not. I didn't think so. <laughs> Good job. A little sooner magic right now. Five pound sooner magic. One more five pounder and I might get to play tomorrow. There wasn't that many 18 pound strings yesterday though. There was quite a few 17s. Uh, I'm, an, I'm a pound ahead, so I figure if I catch 18, it'll stay ahead of enough of them maybe. Might even pass one or two ahead of me. So don't hold anything back today. Unless you get about 20 pounds, then you can hold something back. Kind of wishing I hadn't held back that first day. Kind of wish I'd have, while I had those conditions, might try to catch a couple more five pounders. My tree. It's just a little one, I don't need that. He doesn't play.
It won't help it. The Walmart FLW Tour is brought to you by Straight Talk. Same phones, same networks, half the cost. Chevy Silverado, the one you depend on, the one that lasts. Ranger Boats, still building legends one at a time. Evan Rood, power, performance, and 300 hours with no dealer scheduled maintenance. Off, keep bugs off. And by Castrol. It's more than just oil, it's liquid engineering. I do feel like every second there is fish swimming out of these bushes and they're going out here behind us. Water's falling now and all these fish that were way back in the back of that stuff is starting to move out here to the outside. Some are still staying shallow and some are moving on out and getting ready for their, their summertime deal. If I can just figure out which ones want to stay and which ones want to go and meet them in between. The Walmart FLW Tour is in Grove, Oklahoma, and 20 of the best anglers in the business are chasing after bass that have been on the move. I'm throwing a deep crankbait right now on some brush on a break out here. See if I can find some fish that have moved out here. If, if, you know, if I can find them, I think they'll be better quality. Grand Lake has plenty of quality fish for Clawson out deep. In fact, this impoundment in the northeast corner of Oklahoma is one of the most consistent fisheries in the country. The top 20 launched from Groves Wolf Creek Park, while Clawson and about half the field are staying around Mid Lake. It's uh, a lot of the fish are moving out of these creeks, I think. I think that's gonna be a white bass. It's gonna be a whitey. The wrong species of bass for Clawson as he's outside the cut line. Only the top 10 pros will move on to fish the final day, and so far, all of our top 10 have five bass limits, while Jason Christie is maintaining his two pound advantage. You know, I know they're gonna catch them really good again. If I could get one more four pounder, three and a half, four pounder like that, I think I'd make the top 10 be close. In practice, I did a little bit of everything, fish deep, fish shallow, fish willows. What's amazing is I've caught every bass that I've weighed in fishing away. I did not get a single bite in practice. And that's, you know, that's what it takes out here against these guys. You have to be able to adjust and change and because the conditions change. No, 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 no. Not gonna help. Andy Morgan is the most consistent angler on tour, and the Evanroot Pro took over the lead in the season points race by making the top 20 cut today. His best finish this season has been at Lewis Smith Lake, where he placed third. He's also in Elk River, where Christie is fishing. I'm skipping around quite a bit. I mean, there's some pressure in the area that I'm fishing. There's several of us actually made the cut back out of this one area. And you have to skip around, you know, between other anglers. So, you know, I have some long stretches that I fish, three or 400 yards long, but primarily you'll get to fish 100 yards and you're gonna have to bump around somewhere else. Big one. Thank goodness. Finally landed one of them. Once I get my limit, which you know makes you feel a lot more comfortable after the first 45 minutes of the tournament, and you've got you know a bag like you you have you know every morning, you know a lot more comfortable and you can relax a little bit. Yeah, on a four-day tournament, you always got to be careful of don't burning of burning your fish because when you only have a few places, and it's very critical to, to make sure you have enough for the next day because you could catch a three-pounder and not help you today and throw it back, whereas tomorrow you could have really used that fish. I've been catching all my fish cranking pretty shallow, you know, one to five feet. And today started out good. I caught a limit. I had a limit by probably five after seven. And caught a couple decent fish and just slow and steady now, catching a few here and there. Nothing real spectacular yet. Still, still got room for some upgrades. I got two under three pounds in the box. We gained two ounces. Well, it helps a little bit. This lake, as many bass as it has in it, you can, like I said, you can fish the same areas over and over and over. You don't ever catch them all. Ooh, did you see that? 
That's a big one too. That's one might be the one I need right there. I'll say this, tying the snail with 25 pound fluorocarbon, if you can do that, you can do anything. Brain surgery, just like trying to tie a slinky. I've got more confidence in this area of catching a 20 pound bag than I do anywhere. I mean, I've caught 20 pound bags all over this lake, but this area, under the circumstances, I'm gonna fish right here until they run me out anyway. The only thing that's gonna run Christy out is the clock as time on day three comes to an end and the anglers make their way to the Walmart in Grove, Oklahoma to find out if they made the cut. This was the last day of competition for the co-anglers and the crowd is anxious to see who will take the title. Five ounces, your champion is Keith Honeycutt of Temple, Texas. A sweet victory for Honeycutt, who is now $25,000 richer. We smashed them early this morning. I had a pretty good limit, maybe 14 or 15 pounds, and decided to go fish some deep spots. I'm talking about 10 foot is all. And I caught a couple three and a half pounders down about 10 foot deep. He is your current angler of the year points leader. More top tens than anyone in FLW history. Evan Ruth Pro, Andy Morgan. A limit today, 19 pounds and six ounces. There's a ton of fish in here, but getting one over five pounds is a challenge. He led on day one, led on day two. Can he lead again going into the final day? The one and only, you guys welcome hometown boy, Rayovac Pro, Jason Christie. A limit worth 17 pounds and 10 ounces. He's caught 58 pounds and four ounces of Grand Lake bass. This is the lake that taught me how to fish, and, and it's a special place, and I have a lot of friends here, so it would be, you know, it'd be really cool to win here. Christie's lead grows just a little bit more going into the final day, but the weights are tight below him as the next five anglers are separated by just two pounds. FLW continues to find ways to connect bass fishing fans with their favorite sport. And this season, fans are taking advantage of live streaming video during the tournament to follow all the action in real time. Audio in. Let's not power the unit on yet until everything's connected, okay? Gotcha. On the final day of the tournament, every one of our top 10 anglers will have a GoPro camera mounted on the passenger console. The cameras are connected through a cellular connection, which streams the video output live to the internet. Megan. Anyone can watch the top four anglers on the final day from our website. And for those who subscribe to our mobile FLW app, all 10 cameras are at the tip of your finger. These streaming cameras, along with the on the water reporting that goes out on Twitter and our live streaming of the weigh ins, provides an unprecedented amount of coverage of professional bass fishing. You know, I'm looking for five big bites today. I had three five in the five pound class the first day and it's, it's very conceivable to catch five here. It's not probable that, that somebody would do that, but it is possible. I'm on some real good fish. They're shallow, but they're post spawn fish. So I've got to hunt around for them. I've seen them on my graph. I really concentrate and find them because if I do find them, it's every cast. I can catch them real quick. You know, I know they're going to bite today. It's cloudy. And they bit the first day really good when it was cloudy. I don't know if it'll put them as tight as they've been the last couple of days, but they'll definitely be around some of those willow trees and bushes and whatnot. So shallow fishing should be pretty good. You know, today we have uh, low light conditions, and, and even though we're fishing shallow and you think you'd want the sun to position them, the first day they really, really bit. And I'm hoping the, the weather, the low light, kind of gets them fired back up and we can get a lot of bites today. It's the final day for the Walmart FLW Tour on Grand Lake, and all the pressure is on the local favorite, Jason Christie, who's been able to lead for the last three days. But this is the day that matters now. Let's go fishing. Let's go get him today. Need five five-pounders. Let's go get some big willows and see if we can catch some big ones. The spot I'm starting on is, is just a big round flat here and it's got a lot of rock and, and there's a road bed that comes through from the other side that cuts across right through here and it's got a couple rough sections. They've been spawning back here in this these trees and what they've done is they've pulled back out into this uh, little bit deeper stuff and um, just I guess recuperating. I've been catching all my fish cranking this week. It's just 
what I've got confidence in, something I can wind fast and kind of get a reaction bite out of them. I, just, I don't have the patience to sit there and go slow and flip, but at least doing this, I know the boat's moving slow, but I'm making a lot of casts and winding it back really fast, so it makes me feel like I'm moving fast. <laughs> you know, the fish have kind of been in different places each day, and, and you just have to kind of fish everything to start off the day to see what they're on. Just hoping for that first tug, you know. Yesterday it was it was a while after takeoff, and I'll just be glad when I get that first bite, you know, whether it's big or little or something, you know, you just kind of need a bite to get you kicking. Fish, you're supposed to wake up this morning. Got a little cloud cover. They said no wind means no shad. I caught two three and a half pounders on back to back throws right here the first day. My partner missed two fives here yesterday. I caught a couple of threes. There he is. <laughs> Gets us in the game though. <laughs> Gets us in the game. They've been a lot of fish. This place has got a lot of pressure, but there's a lot of bass living in this lake. I guess they're still reproducing. Well, it's just kind of a bank that goes down through here, and it's a place that ain't got a ton of stuff where you can kind of get to the shore. A lot of the fish I've been catching has been pretty shallow. Caught a lot, you know, just out of this grass and stuff, especially early and late. I'm throwing a buzz bait right now. I have been, about 99% of my fish have come on a jig. I'm gonna throw this buzz bait a lot this morning. Maybe might catch a big one. There he is. Well, he's right where he should have been in that grass. I hear so I lost those two, three pounders yesterday. Got to catch the big ones. The lake's dropped another three inches from yesterday, so as it continues to drop, those bigger fish are gonna be fewer and fewer in the shallow flooded cover. Fishing a Yamamoto flapping hog. It's just like a crawdad type bait with a half ounce tungsten head and a five aught hook. I'm just flipping it in there and just fishing it kind of slow. You always try to flip the edge first because it's a lot harder to land the fish if you hook him way up in the stuff. So I always peck around the edges first and then if he's not there, I'll go way up inside. There's a nice one. Thank you, Jesus. Look at the fat, the fatness on that baby. Yamamoto flapping hog strikes again. The morning bite is very active, so now the race is on to see who can bring in the biggest stringer on Grand Lake. It's the drama of professional bass fishing on the Walmart FLW Tour. Yeah. Third cast of jig. Bigger one. Watch it, watch it, watch it, watch it. Go. Oh. <laughs> That's crazy, man. How many is that? Five? Full cast in row. Andy Morgan is off to a quick start here on this final day of the Walmart FLW Tour on Grand Lake. Kind of weird. I started not to even throw up here. I saw this little patch of weed sticking out. Pulled right up here to it, picked the jig up, and we caught four on four straight casts. He knows he'll have to call out all four fish if he wants to move up the leaderboard. If you limit out on those right there, you got 12 and a half, 13 pounds. You know what they call you at the end of the day? Loser, if that's all you got. Yeah. I would trade those five for one five pounder, I promise you. Barry Wilson used to play college football at Auburn, but now the former running back is running water in search of big bass. This is his second top 10 cut of the season, and all his key fish have come off the same stretch of bank. The main thing with, with both of these places that I'm fishing first thing in the morning is, is the type of structure it is. These fish are moving out and uh, feeding on shad first thing in the morning. And if you can find some of these key areas, you can, you can catch them pretty quick. That's a big one. 
That's a big one. That's a big one. Oh my gosh. All right. That's kind of we need right there. Number five, number five. Four pounder. Keep them coming, keep them coming. Come here, through that grass. Easy through that grass. Get him in here. Oh, God! <laughs> the two anglers from Oklahoma, Jason Christie and Jimmy Houston, are catching a lot of fish, but not the size they expect out of Grand. Well, you know, I know what I'm going to do. I mean, I, you know, I got a real solid plan that's not going to change no matter what. I mean, you beat all but three people for three days. You don't want to screw with that too much. Don't don't try to get too smart or make it too complicated. You know, I hadn't changed anything. That's the thing that scares me. Is you hardly you hardly win a tournament fishing the same exact way for four days because things usually change. But it's funny because as many places as I have to fish here, I just don't have confidence right now. And I mean, this is the place that when the lake gets up, I just I'm home. I, I thought, man, I'd like to be up there flipping them willows because I know what what the potential is in here to catch. One of the problems that we have when you really, really have fished a lot and you have a lot of experience, you have a tendency to complicate the game when it's not a complicated game. And that's why most fishermen have flat heads like this. They go, God, I should have known that. God, why didn't I think of that? It's easy to make the bad decisions. It's easy to make the mistakes and, and not get the kind of bites that you, that you want to be getting. I believe that's an upgrade. <laughs> I think that's an upgrade. Woo! Sugar bear. <laughs> Meanwhile, over in the Elk River, Christy isn't upgrading yet. He's yet to land five keepers, but he's not worried. In fact, he's rooting for Jimmy to do well at this event. It'd be cool for him to win, you know, because he's like 118 years old. He doesn't have a whole lot of years left. He'd be the one of the few guys that's won two tournaments in, in two different centuries. I just hope I'm in as, uh, as good a as mood as him whenever I'm 84 years old. Watch out, watch out, watch out, watch out. Gosh! One more one, baby. Three more bites. All week it seems like there's there's certain things the fish want to be on. What I was actually fishing was just kind of little isolated rock piles. They're out off the bank, out in three to five feet of water. They're real shallow on little flat banks, and that's just a stopping point for these fish as they come off the bed and get ready to move out to their deep water places. They just set up on those shallow rock piles, and I've been intercepting them with a little square bill crankbait all week. There we go. That's one we need. Got him. There's a good one. That's what we want right there. Yeah. Two and a half pound core right there. The slugfest is in full effect as these anglers are finding the big ones. Can Christy dig deep and pull out a win? Man, it is slow. I mean, it's just, it's hard to get a bite. Oh. Okay. Jason Christie's headed into the willows to see if the bass that bit is still hooked at the other end of his line. Came off. Well, that stinks. Even without that fish, Christie still has the lead, a lead he hasn't given up since day one of the four-day affair. But two members of the Chevy team are right behind him, and one of them is the legend, Jimmy Houston, who knows how to fish Oklahoma waters as well, if not better, than Christie. Well, this big point sticking way off out here, in, in the, you know, and the, separating these two big bays, you know, just a, a natural place for bass to hang out, plus the fact that 
when you have wind in here, you blow a lot of shad on these banks. You'll see the birds feeding in here. You see the first day when I, I caught a couple of three and a half pounders on back-to-back -back throws, and about 10 throws later, caught a five pounder. And the wind really started beating in here that first day, and it was cloudy, and it had blown a lot of shad in there, and there was two or three big blue herons in there fighting each other, trying to catch the shad, and of course, it sucked the bass in. And, but being out here on a point like this, it's one of these areas that you know, will replenish itself. There'll be more bass come in here all the time. Of course, they come in here in the evening and feed just kind of naturally, no matter, you know, whether you got wind or sun or clouds or rain or whatever, they're gonna do that. So you're always gonna have a, you're always gonna have a few that stay in here, you know, from the nighttime feed. in a dip net! <laughs> yeah, fell off in a dip net! Yeah. Oh, he's getting a little tongue. He fell off in a dip net! We sure are catch one right through here in these, in these different color bushes. There's a lot of water. You see all them willows back here behind us? There's a lot of water back there and that water drawing down. And the wind kicking right here, they ought to be, I mean, uh, ought to catch one right through here. Usually, usually it's a good one. I mean, this is just one of them places that I've caught some really big fish. Oh, gosh! That'll help, son. That will help. We've got three of the right kind. Probably 95% of everything I caught has been on a black and blue 3 8 ounce Lucky Strike jig, just swimming it around bushes, willows, grass. Just put the trolling motor down and cover a lot of water. There's one. That is a good one there. Come on, baby. Easy, easy. A little better. Moving up. While Robbie Dotson is flipping and swimming a jig, Chevy Pro Brian Thrift continues to work his crankbait in the shallow water near takeoff. The key thing I'm looking for when I'm cranking, I'm throwing a little square bill that's running four to five feet deep, and the main thing I'm looking for is shallow rocks. I don't care if it's got bushes around it, docks, whatever. As long as there's rock under the water in that three to five foot depth range, I feel like I've got a good chance to get bit. Little yeah, we better let him. I'm gonna break my line again. Five. Ounces at the time, but we get there. Come on, there's gotta be one more left in Elk River. Jason Christie knows that he's within reach of his second win this season. It would put him among the best in the sport, but he's got to stay focused. I mean, you got every cast has gotta be, you gotta be thinking about nothing than, other than your, your bait and how it's relating to the bottom, because if you ain't on bottom, you need to be swinging, because if you give these fish a second more than what they need, they uh, are gone. You're getting that crazy feel. I'm getting ready to catch one. <laughs> stay on there, stay on there, stay on there, stay on there, stay on there. That'll work. Look at this. I bet you ain't never seen that before. He's got a topwater bait in his head. He's got a pop R in the side of his face. We catch one more four pounder. This is a done deal. Now, I'm not gonna say it's a done deal. I'm gonna say I like my chances because Grand Lake can put out a big old bag. Walmart FLW Tour is brought to you by 
Walmart. Save money, live better. Mercury Marine, official engine of the FLW. Kellogg's, from great starts come great things. Ever start, fish more, worry less. Lowrance, find, navigate, dominate with the new HDS Gen 2 Touch by Lowrance. And by Chevy Silverado, the one you depend on, the one that lasts. We got the best time of the day to catch one begging. Three, four pounders in an hour. Come on, baby. I know you live there. God, this is so pretty down through here off this front edge. One big giant five pound suicidal bass. The time is running out on our top 10 pros here at the Walmart FLW Tour on Grand Lake. No one has caught Rayovac Pro Jason Christie yet, and he's been fishing with a passion to win all day. How many five pounders have I caught on this lake in the last 20 years? Just to think that one of those right now will let me win a tour level event on the lake that taught me how to fish, and that's pretty special. He's doing what he loves, flipping a creature bait in flooded willow trees and looking for one more biggin. Jimmy Houston made his run early on, landing five good fish. Things have been slow since for the Chevy Pro. Jay Ellis, who loves to catch fish shallow, has had a solid day that'll move him up the leaderboard. But it's been a frustrating day for Barry Wilson, where the magic has left his magic spot. And for Andy Morgan, who's caught plenty of keepers, just nothing of size. Things have been better for Robbie Dotson, though, whose fish have increased in size throughout the day, pushing him up the leaderboard. And Chevy Pro Brian Thrift has made a run at Christie throwing a crankbait. But the versatile Angler of the Year contender is changing it up here in the final hour. There's a lot of guys on tour that are really good at one or two things. and. When we have a tournament like that, that's where they tend to shine. And I kind of see myself as being very versatile. I mean, it doesn't matter if I have to catch them off a boat dock or catch them cranking shallow or catch them out deep. I feel comfortable doing everything. I mean, I'm not real great at anything. Probably the thing I'm worse at is flipping. <laughs> that's what scared me the most about this tournament was I knew it was gonna be a flipping tournament. Ironically, he put down his crankbait when he spotted a willow tree, he just had to flip. Oh yeah, woo -hoo. get busy. Oh, that's what we needed right there. Look at that. That's what we needed right there, Lauer. That's exactly what we needed. That was the first flipping bite I've had all week. Come on, sugar bear. Come on, five pounder. Come on, big boy. The conditions are getting rotten. Uh, if I can't catch two off that over there, I don't give myself a chance. God, dogs. Well, those clouds they promised us, them lion weathermen, they ought to fire them all. I like to be a United States congressman. That's the biggest mistake I made when I graduated from college. I should have run for office. Come on, baby. I'll roll. Give me one more good one. Just throwing reeling. Making as many as you can make. Because I fished a lot of water that wasn't all the same. You know, I just take off down through a place, some be flat, some have bushes, some wouldn't. I just keep right on going. Oh, there he is. That's a big one. That's the one. Oh, yeah. Come on, baby. Come here. Come here. Gotcha. Yes. That's a good one. I'll take four more of them. Kind of roll, baby. We're going to roll with it. You know, I have a decent bag right now, but uh, like I said before, this is Grand Lake, and, and I've fished team tournaments before. I've come in with 24, 25 pounds thinking that I had it won and, and didn't, you know, get second or third place. So I've been sitting here. This is where I caught them yesterday, down, down this stretch where it's starting to happen. I've been just over there waiting and waiting and waiting, hoping, waiting to come over here because I knew I was just going to make one pass on it. 
What's happened is the, between the pressure, I mean, they're just, they're just, they're in the thickest part of it. And it's just like flipping mats. I mean, I'm flipping in there and just shaking it. And what that, that rattle is just calling them. Gosh! And that willow bush, he's in the deepest part of the shade. God, it feels so good. Just go, 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 go. Take it and take it to the weigh-in. All 10 anglers are heading in after the fourth and final day of this Walmart FLW Tour event here on Oklahoma's Grand Lake of the Cherokees. The anglers come off the water and receive a police escort from Grove's Finest all the way to the Walmart and the big stage. It's here that a large crowd has gathered to see if the local favorite, Jason Christie, can secure his second win of the season. A fight! limit for Brian Thrift. Wow! New leader, 19 pounds and 11 ounces. Wow! His 11th top 10 with FLW Outdoors. You guys welcome Ranger Pro, Robbie Dotson. 19.9 on day one, 18.5 on day two. You need 19 pounds and 10 ounces to dethrone the Chevy Pro Brian Thrift. He got four in there. A five bass limit for Robbie Dodson. Wow! You're gonna need 19 pounds and 10 ounces. A limit today worth 19 pounds and four ounces. Wow! You miss it by seven ounces. He's been doing this for a long time. His second cut of the year. Part of the Chevy Pro Team, the legend, the one and only, Jimmy Houston. On day one, the legend Jimmy Houston of Cookson, Oklahoma, weighed in 21 pounds and seven ounces. A great start. In three days, he's amassed 53 pounds and eight ounces of Grand Lake of the Cherokee Bass. A five bass limit. Jimmy, you need 19 pounds and four ounces. Five bass limit worth 18 pounds and three ounces. You're going to be just a little bit short. All right, Jimmy. <laughs> Andy Morgan brings up a small limit and is unable to overtake Thrift, who's starting to feel good about his chances. And he also knocks off Barry Wilson, who can't crack the 15-pound mark today. But that leaves one angler left to face. Moves you to fifth place. Gosh! That'll work. He's led every single day. He's already won two FOW Tour events, one earlier this year on Beaver Lake. Can he make it a second one in one year? You guys welcome to the stage. Rayovac Pro, your leader, Jason Christie. On so day one, Jason Christie led with 21 pounds and 12 ounces. In three days, he's amassed 58 pounds and four ounces of Grand Lake of the Cherokee Bass. He needs 14 pounds and eight ounces to dethrone the Chevy Pro Brian Thrift. A five-pass limit for the Rayovac Pro Jason Christie. Wow! You needed 14 pounds and eight ounces. Your limit today worth 19 pounds, 13 ounces. Your champion is Jason Christie. Wow! Two times in one year, the Ray of that Pro from Park Hill, Oklahoma, your tour champion. This lake is responsible for teaching me how to fish and being diverse. I, I actually didn't have a very good practice, and, and everybody knows I was in the Elk River, and the reason I went there is just that's the area that I had the most confidence in uh, to catch big ones. And I think the reason is, is because it's so big, it's a big area. There's a lot of stuff that's real wooly, you know, and, and I didn't think anybody could cover it. But I lost that, that big one right off the bat this morning. I thought, here we go, downhill. But we got her turned around, and, and uh, like I said, it's just it's a special day. This officially makes him a bass fishing millionaire, Jason Christie. 
Christie doesn't let down his hometown fans and joins the elite ranks of pros who have two victories in the same season. Remember, FLW is the best in fishing on and off the water. So go to FLWOutdoors.com for expanded coverage and tips from our top pros. On behalf of all of us here at FLW, thanks for watching.